This video is brought to you by Babbel. What's up guys, Michael here, and today we're going to talk about the best reviewed movie in recent memory. A real special gem in a world of duds. Welcome to the Dumb Dumb Game. Oh, I'm, well, I'm sorry dude. Are you kidding me? Obviously we're talking about Jackass Forever, which comes 20 years on the heels of the franchise's debut film. And we're not exaggerating. Almost every film critic is singing its praises. Audiences and even the Twitterati agree. It's currently the number one movie in the country. And while we are huge Jackass fans, we talked about it before, so be sure to check out that video, even we couldn't have seen this coming. So with the wild success of Jackass Forever, we can't help but ask, why does everyone love this movie? How did Jackass go from a franchise that former vice presidential candidate Joe Lieberman tried to personally destroy to the one thing that could bring America together? Let's find out in this wisecrack quick take, Jackass forever and ever? And spoilers ahead for all the various ways that aging men can traumatize their own testicles. But before we get into it, I wanna talk about this video sponsor, Babbel. Now, I've dabbled in learning new languages before. I've tried to learn French a few times and je suis, not great at it. And I learned some Danish in grad school, but didn't keep it up. And that's why Babbel is such a cool opportunity to dust off my brain cells and really commit to learning a new language. One of the things that's so great about Babbel is its focus on practical conversations you'd have in real life. Like, where is the nearest subway station? And do you like my Grateful Dead t-shirt? And the lessons are designed by actual human people not robots or algorithms, which adds another layer of actual usefulness to each lesson. Anne is in Paris for the first time visiting her friend Jean-Luc. So we're gonna say, salut, Anne. Salut, Anne. And now she's gonna thank him, so she's gonna say, Merci, Jean-Luc. Mm -hmm. With its multiple formats, like podcasts and games, in addition to straight up lessons, Babbel sets you up for success from the start, which is clutch for me in case I ever drop in on any of my old grad school teachers. Uh, hi, Lair. That's hi, teacher, in Danish. Pronounced not great. Visit the link in the description to get 65% off your subscription. And don't forget about their 20 day money back guarantee. Again, hit the link in the description to get 65% off. And now, Back to the show. Before we get into it, let's be perfectly clear. We are not going to try to convince you that Jackass is secretly doing something super deep. As Brianna Ziegler of Paste puts it, there is little use in over-intellectualizing Jackass. The endeavor is futile because what makes Jackass such a compelling and uniting artistic force is that it's so gloriously uncomplicated. So rather than ascribing intellectual meaning to the film itself, we instead want to focus on why people are so hyped about this movie at this particular moment in time. Let's start out by talking about human bodies, and namely our obsession with controlling human bodies especially our own. We've seen this on dual fronts over the past couple of years, with people filling their already cramped homes with Pelotons and workout gear to keep their bodies under control, while at the same time, having their eyes monitored by their employers to make sure they're spending adequate screen time making money for their business daddy. All while doing everything possible not to let the scary virus into our bodies and, you know, like smothering ourselves in sanitizer. That's not to mention the broader multi-billion dollar diet and wellness industries. Whether it's fad diets, supplements, or expensive workout classes, many of these products promise us a new level of bodily control. And of course, for those wanting to kick it up a notch, body modifying surgeries are just a doctor's appointment away. Many of these products and services seem to be fighting against the raw animality of the human body. It's as if the more we can shape and control our human vessels, the less susceptible we are to aging and decay. We are lumpy, hairy animals that piss and puke and fart and shit, who spend most of our lives acting as if we are not lumpy, hairy animals that piss and puke and fart and shit. But according to scholar Ian Burkett, the body cannot be understood simply as the materialization of prior discursive and normative controls, but that it is the source of our collective experiences and a site for opposition to established power relations and ideological hegemonies. Which is another way of saying that while you may spend a lot of your life trying to control your body, there are alternative, actively oppositional ways to use it. So when we watch a dude literally jump into a pile of cacti or witness a woman quietly tongue kissing a taser, it reminds us that bodies can actively transgress the societal norms of what they should do. Burkett describes it as such. A body can be worked too hard, 
placed under too much stress, and the person may not be able to control some of the functions of his or her body in a way that would suit social codes. The inappropriate sounds or smells of the body in a public place, or blushing at a misdemeanor when one wants to appear cool and sophisticated, are just some of the innumerable perils of being a body in Western culture. Basically, hiding your body's grossness is both mandatory and kind of impossible. In some workplaces, bodies are controlled so heavily that people aren't even given the time and space to take care of their most base needs. Sometimes I have to make excuses for why I'm late for a call when really, I just have to poop. But unlike most of us, the jackasses don't hide their bodily functions, nor do they express shame about their bodies. In fact, Jackass Forever completely ignores the perils of being a body in Western culture and embraces inappropriate sounds and smells in very public places. And so when we're watching, all of the bodily shame floats into thin air as we celebrate how fun it is to do weird stuff with our gross bodies. This is something of a retreat to the way bodies used to be conceived of before the Renaissance as the grotesque. This was especially realized at the medieval carnival celebrations where people literally flung their shit at each other for fun. As Burkitt says, grotesque bodies are not closed, but are open to the world and emphasis is placed on the body parts that stretch out into it, such as the nose, pot belly, phallus, breast, and those open to it, such as the mouth, genitals, and anus, all of which connect us to the earth and to other people. And it's not a huge stretch to say that our undercarriages connect us to other people. Think about it. When you're watching Brad Pitt looking hot in a movie, you're not watching him and thinking, wow, same. But when Dave England plops down on an open air toilet with the morning's paper and a fresh load to drop, you're more likely to think, I do that too. Well, inside and, and not on camera, but it's still, it's, it's the same. And when Aaron McGeehy, AKA Danger Aaron, gets repeatedly assaulted in his testicles by various professional athletes, I can immediately empathize with the horrible, horrible feeling on a most visceral level. But it's not just that seeing these dazzling images on a huge silver screen is oddly relatable. It might also be the case that watching a grown man sh his pants is a portal to what philosophers like Immanuel Kant and Jean-Francois Lyotard call the sublime. Often described as a pleasurable anxiety, examples of sublime experiences might be gazing at a terrifyingly huge mountain peak or seeing a massive tornado ripping across the plains. And these experiences usually produce two seemingly opposed feelings, i.e. utter terror at the massive tornado heading towards your team of storm chasers and awe at the beauty of nature. In the case of Jackass Forever, these opposing forces might be disgust and amusement, or childlike wonder and stomach-churning revulsion. According to Leotard, in these sublime moments, our mind basically has a crisis when it reaches the edge of what usually makes sense. The conceptual frameworks which usually help us understand the world hit their limits. And the other side of these conceptual limits is oddly enjoyable. We think this might be one of the reasons that folks love Jackass Forever. It's not a film that's asking us to consider a set of underlying themes and concepts, which is refreshing because over the last couple of years, many of us have become pretty skeptical about the grand narratives that dominate politics and culture. For better or worse, folks have grown warier of political and economic power than they've been in decades. And things like working from home and increased government benefits pulled back the curtain on how much of the way society used to work was kind of made up. Put differently, we're living through an era in which lots of the ideas and values that have shaped our culture are starting to expose the meaninglessness at their core. And this might be the secret beauty of Jackass. It doesn't hide from the underlying emptiness of much of modern life. It embraces it and has fun with it. At a time where disaster movies are shoddy metaphors for climate change, slasher films are meta-commentaries on the film industry, and every comedy is trying to be deep, Jackass Forever isn't about anything. There's no underlying theme, they're not exploring trauma, the stunts aren't performative metaphors for social issues, they simply are what they are. When we lose our minds laughing at guys sliding down a massive lubed up slip and slide, we're not reflecting on the wit, irony, or meaning of a given stunt, but responding to the raw and immediate absurdity that's right in front of our eyes. We don't need to find meaning to make it worth it. Some people might see this as a distraction from all the serious things going on in the world, but 
just maybe, Jackass Forever is doing something much more honest by creating entertainment without any appeals to underlying truth or meaning. It's like a very fun and hyperactive version of nihilism, but a nihilism you get to do with your friends. What could be better than that? So are we saying that Jackass Forever is an intentional philosophical treatise on the oddity of the human body and the sublime nature of extreme stunts in an increasingly meaningless world? No, not, not really. But that doesn't mean that these ideas can't help us understand why this movie feels so uniquely suited to our current cultural moment. At the end of the day, maybe one of the reasons we love Jackass so much is that in a world where every cultural phenomenon and media object seems to require a reading list to fully understand it, Jackass requires nothing from us. It simply asks that we put our phones away, stare at the screen, and laugh at all the dumb stuff. But what do you guys think? Is Jackass Forever profoundly the right movie for right now, or have we just never outgrown our 8th grade sense of humor? Let us know in the comments. Big thanks to our patrons for all your support, and be sure to check out our podcast. Hit that subscribe button like it's a scary green crotch monster knocking over a building, and don't forget to ring that bell. And as always, thanks for watching. Later.